All right, welcome back to today, chapter seven. Understand we are now at the end of the first section. So there will be a test is the next step. And then we will return tomorrow with chapter eight and continue right on, all right? <clears throat> so today we're gonna to finish up the second half of the title section and deal with what we call public records. So here's my question that I wanna start off the question with today is if I quit claim deed a property to Sh Sharon, who's Sharon? To Sarah, and then I did that yesterday, and then today I forget, and I again quit claim it to Cameron today, who goes down and records it at the recorder's office, the question is, who is the owner of the property? Who is the owner? <clears throat> Everybody that thinks Sarah is the owner, thumbs up. Yeah. Everybody that thinks Cameron is the owner. All right, great class. You guys are freaking geniuses, all right? Because the owner of the property is actually Sarah. All right, I know some of you are going well, but Cameron had it recorded. Recording has absolutely nothing to do with the legality of ownership. We just ran into this yesterday after class. We pulled uh, the public records and it had someone else as the owner because the person that we're listing it for just bought it and rehabbed it and are already putting it back on the market so there was a question, it hadn't got recorded yet. He still owns it. Remember, deed gets transferred when it's delivered and accepted. Nowhere in there did I say, and then it gets recorded, all right? And for those of you that may be skeptical out there, let's go through another one. If I quit claim the property to Sarah yesterday, how did I in fact even own it to quit claim it to Cameron today, I didn't. So Cameron actually has a fraudulent deed, all right? That is called a fraudulent deed. So Sarah's actually the owner of that. So everybody, I've got a question for you, and here's my question, maybe. Everybody but Ross, where do you think I live? I'm assuming everybody can see this. So you assume that's where I live. Ross, I sent you a text earlier. Is that where I live? Thumbs up or down? Thumbs up. How does Ross know that? Ross knows because I told him the others of you looked on the board or the screen because that's where students look to get information from an instructor. You looked in a place that we typically put information for students. That is all the recorder's office is. This isn't legal just because I wrote it. I could have written something else. I legally live at that address and Ross knows that because I gave Ross what is called actual notice there in your book. I gave Ross actual notice. Unfortunately, I don't have all of your text numbers. I couldn't text everybody and I couldn't text everybody in the world. So the society has created this place called a recorder's office, which is where we go down and record information. And if you want further proof that recording is not legality, follow me on this. Remember we talked about the legal bundle of rights and the branches, and I said that they would break a twig off and pass it to the other person? That was hundreds if not thousands of years ago. The recorder's office has not been around that long. So, Following that rule, you there would be no way to sell property if there was no recorder's office, and that's not true. The recorder's office gives what's called constructive notice. Constructive notice 
is notice that is placed someplace and everybody else with intelligence goes and looks at that one place, but it doesn't mean that that place is current, it's up to date, it's truthful, it's just where we as a society have decided to place information. We actually have another place that is a constructive notice. I don't know where my friend Brett McLaren lives. I've not seen him in 20 years. Well, I haven't seen him since I sold his house. That was the deal I was telling you about. He moved to Minot, North Dakota to be the wastewater plant guy, all right? <clears throat> I saw him yesterday eating an ice cream cone. How do I know that's the truth? What platform? It's called Facebook. That's all Facebook is, is a constructive notice platform. We go there to look at information and go, Brent lives in Minot, he's got two kids, and look, he just had an ice cream cone. I know that, but I really don't because Brent could have been lying. One of my favorite ones is the, there's that uh, website that has all that, it's called Busted or something like that. All these people that put pictures on, and there's this girl, this, she's got this close-up selfie, and the, the picture's entitled, This Traffic's Driving Me Nuts. And when you look real close in the reflection of her sunglasses, you can see that there is no cars in front of her. She is just making that up for sensationalism. So even Facebook doesn't always tell the truth, believe it or not, some of you young folks. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true, okay? <clears throat> so we have created this thing called the recorder's office where we place objects or documents in to get recorded for public notice. They could be imperfect, could be a fraudulent document. It could not have literally have made it there yet, which is the issue we're dealing with. I mean, normally Marion County is anywhere from five to six weeks behind simply because of the human process of the young lady that's working back there. And there's actually two of them. No, that's not true. One's the assistant, one's actually, and she literally, time stamps the document, does another one. And she's got a pile on her desk and she just works through the pile. When you close, the title company goes down and puts that on the pile. And when she gets to it, she gets to it, all right? So it may not get recorded in the actual recorder's office for three, four, five weeks. That doesn't mean that the buyer doesn't own the property. All right, so recording has nothing to do with it. When they record the documents, they record them by date. So documents get recorded by date. They go in there, they'll be given a priority. They'll be given an amount, 100,000 from Fifth Third Bank. and the date all right and they get recorded first hence the name a first lien position and remember a lien is an encumbrance and it is a monetary encumbrance and here's the amount of money now i'm going to take a deviation real quick in this chapter under the priority section and do a little bit of chapter 14 just so that we can understand it. So in a normal sale, I sell the house for 150,000. I have a first lien of $100,000. When I collect that $150,000 at the closing table from you, the buyer, the first 100,000 pays off my lien and I keep the balance of 50 grand. You as the buyer asked for the general warranty deed, which said you wanted all of the encumbrances removed. There you go. I just removed it with your money that you gave me 
and I keep the difference, all right? Now, let's say I want a second lien, I need some money. I go out and get 50,000 from Nat City. It got recorded later. Notice the date. It is called a junior lien or a second lien because it's second priority. Now, when I sell the property for 150, you ask for me to remove all of the encumbrances. So I take the first 100, clear that lien. I take the second 50, clear that lien. And I now walk away with no money. And you now have the property with all of the liens removed. That is the process and aha, uh -huh, this happens. Now, one of the things that you could potentially see, we will talk about in another chapter, is let's say I fail to pay my HOA dues. So they're gonna go out and put a lien on it. It comes in third, behind the other two, and now they try to foreclose and get their money. The problem is they would have to pay the first, they would have to pay the second, and look what's happening. The house is only worth 150. I owe $160,000. And if you remember on chapter two, when I told you we're going to take away your rights, and I said, if you owe money on it, you can't give it away because, you know, Fifth Third would have something to say about it. Here's this issue. The reality is I am upside down. I owe more money than the house is worth. So while they could potentially foreclose and they have a right to, based on last chapter, anybody with a secured credit, can a secured lien can foreclose. There is no reason why they would, because they would be what we call out of the money. So they probably won't do it, all right? So you've got those first, second, and third. Now, you forget to pay your real estate taxes. Looks like January the 1st, a real bitch of a day for you, the last couple of years. <laughs> now, the real estate taxes come to you and they go, we're putting you in the tax lien option. Do you think they are going to be number four? No, they're not. But watch this, you talk about bullying they are going to be number one because what they are literally going to do is literally get rid of all of the other liens. Ta-da! We're number one now. This is why when you often hear that term of somebody says you're Payments are escrowed. What that means is you're paying a portion of the real estate taxes so that your lender will pay these taxes when this comes due and that lien will never happen. Because if it does, the lender not only loses the money they loaned you, they lose the asset that protected it. So they never want to see this happen. And to do that, they force you to every month escrow some money so that when your taxes come due, your lender goes, hey, don't worry, Sarah, we love you so much. We, are, we will take care of these for you. Oh, no, they're doing it for this reason. So that real estate lien never appears on your property, all right? So that is, <clears throat> that is the term priority. <clears throat> So when they get paid, I have to do this a bunch. When things get paid, they get paid by priority. First one in, first one out. 
So the hundred gets the first. Now, let me make sure that we understand. The assumption here is there's, let's go back to this one. Because, so in that situation, first one in, first one out. First lean, second lean, third lean. That position describes their priority and their payoff. The second and third, you will hear generically called junior liens. Number one is the senior lien. All the others are junior to that lien, which could be any number, all right? So that is how they get recorded by date, but they get paid off by priority. And date equals priority unless there is a subordination agreement. And we will talk about subordination agreements in another chapter. A subordination agreement just allows positions to flip-flop, all right? And there are situations when that happens. So a subordination agreement, I don't even think they mention it in this section, allows adjacent liens to flip-flop. We'll cover that in chapter 14. So that's how they get recorded. They get recorded by date. They get paid off by priority, all right? Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and write this down. You might wanna go ahead and write that in your book. It's subordination agreement. It allows for adjacent liens to flip position. You will see this in a refinance when number, first position wants to refinance, they would come back in and then they would flip. So they're back to number one again. You know what? I'm here. You're here. Let's do it. Here's a case of number one gets first. If Fifth Third calls me and says, we want to refinance, we love you so much, we're going to refinance. A refinance is a legal sale with a repurchase. <clears throat> so what happens is Fifth Third gets paid off. Number two slides to number one. They all slide up like the Jenga game. Fifth Third comes back in in the new date but now look what happens they got recorded after so that makes them the new second the old second slid up to first because that one's gone but here's the problem numerically we're still okay 150 but fifth third wants to be the first lien and that city is getting paid to be the second lien. If you've ever had a second lien on your property, the interest rate is actually higher because they are taking the risk of being second. So Fifth Third says to Nat City, hey, we need to get back in first. And Nat City says, yes, you do. So Nat City and Fifth Third exercise a subordinate agreement or a subordination agreement, which allows them to flip-flop. And what you get is now number one's down there, number two's down there. So it has first priority again, but it's dated afterwards. Now, when I sell the house, they still pay the first first and they pay the second second this flipping of priorities is called that subordination agreement that i just mentioned all right it allows adjacent ones to flip spots okay we'll talk more about it in another chapter but literally a subordination you probably should write it in your book so what you see here is they got recorded by date, 
but they got paid off by priority. And date and priority are almost always the same thing unless there's been a subordination agreement exercise where the priorities flip. <laughs>